I'm Jake Wolfenden with Summit Safety Group and the much anticipated COVID-19 Emergency Temporary Standard or ETS for private sector businesses has been released today, Thursday, November 4th, 2021. Quickly, I wanna break down the core elements of the ETS to ensure our clients have the most up-to-date information. So let's get into it. OSHA states that the ETS is necessary to protect unvaccinated workers from the risk of contracting COVID-19 at work. The rule covers all employers with a total of 100 or more employees, with a few exceptions that we'll talk about in just a bit. Covered employers must develop, implement, and enforce a mandatory COVID-19 vaccination policy with an exception for employers that instead adopt a policy requiring employees to elect either to get vaccinated or to undergo regular COVID-19 testing and wear a face covering at work. Here are some details. Which employers are covered by the ETS? Private employers with 100 or more employees, firm or corporate wide, your total should include part-time and temporary workers as well. In states with OSHA approved state plans, state and local government employers, as well as private employers with 100 or more employees will be covered by state occupational safety and health requirements. Which workplaces are not covered by the ETS? Workplaces covered under the Safer Federal Workforce Task Force COVID-19 Workplace Safety, guidance for federal contractors and subcontractors, and settings where any employee provides healthcare services or healthcare support services when subject to the already established requirements of the healthcare ETS. Workplaces of employers who have fewer than 100 employees in total, and public employers in states without state plans. If an employer is covered by the ETS, does that mean all of its employees must follow the provisions of this ETS? No. The requirements of the ETS do not apply to the following. Employees who do not report to a workplace where other individuals are present. Employees while working from home. And employees who work exclusively outdoors. So what does the ETS require employers to do? This is lengthy, so hang with me develop, implement, and enforce a mandatory COVID-19 vaccination policy with an exception for employers that instead establish, implement, and enforce a policy allowing employees to elect either to get vaccinated or to undergo weekly COVID-19 testing and wear a face covering at the workplace. Also, determine the vaccination status of each employee, obtain acceptable proof of vaccination from vaccinated employees, maintain records of each employee's vaccination status, and maintain a roster of each employee's vaccination status. Also, to support vaccination by providing employees reasonable time, including up to four hours of paid time, to receive each primary vaccination dose and reasonable time paid sick leave to recover from any side effects experiencing, uh, experienced following each primary vaccination dose. Also ensure that each employee who is not fully vaccinated is tested for COVID-19 at least weekly, if in the workplace at least once a week, or within seven days before returning to work, if away from the workplace for a week or longer. Also require employees to promptly provide notice when they receive a positive COVID-19 test or are diagnosed with COVID-19. And immediately remove from the workplace any employee, regardless of vaccination status, who received a positive COVID-19 test or who is diagnosed with COVID-19 by a licensed healthcare provider and to keep that employee out of the workplace until return to work criteria are met. Also ensure that each employee who is not fully vaccinated wears a face covering when indoors or when occupying a vehicle with another person for work purposes, except in certain limited circumstances. Also provide each employee with information in a language and a literacy level the employee understands about the requirements of this ETS and workplace policies and procedures established to implement the ETS. Vaccine efficacy, safety, and the benefits of being vaccinated provided by the CDC document, key things to know about COVID-19 vaccines, 
protections against retaliation and discrimination, and laws that provide for criminal penalties for knowingly supplying false statements or documentation, which we'll get into in just a bit. Also to report work-related COVID-19 fatalities, work-related COVID-19 fatalities to OSHA within eight hours of learning about them and work-related COVID-19 inpatient hospitalizations within 24 hours of the employer learning about the hospitalization. Also make certain records available for examination and copying to an employee and to anyone having written authorized consent of that employee or an employee representative. Another critical question is when does it take effect? By it, I mean the ETS, this Emergency Temporary Standard. Employers must comply with most provisions by 30 days after the date of this publication in the Federal Registrar, which actually should go in by uh, tomorrow, November 5th. Employers must comply with the testing requirement by 60 days after the date of publication in the Federal Register. Now, it's also important to make you aware of some other information OSHA has recently put out there regarding information for employees on penalties for false statements and records. OSHA states that whoever knowingly makes any false statement, representation, or certification in any application, record, report, plan, or other document filed or required to be maintained pursuant to this chapter shall upon conviction be punished by a fine of no more than $10,000 or by imprisonment for not more than six months or by both. Section 1001 in Title 18 of the United States Code, Crimes and Criminal Procedure, also provides for criminal, criminal penalties associated with knowingly supplying false statements or documentation, and it states, Except as otherwise provided in this section, whoever in any matter within the jurisdiction of the executive, legislative, or judicial branch of the government of the United States knowingly and willfully does the following. Number one, falsifies, conceals, or covers up by any trick, scheme, or device a material fact. Two, makes any materially false, fictitious, or fraudulent statement or representation. Or three, makes or uses any false writing or document knowing the same to contain any material false, fictitious, or fraudulent statement or entry shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than five years. False statements or documents made or submitted for purposes of complying with policies required by OSHA's vaccin vaccination and testing ETS could fall under either or both of these statutory provisions we just listed. The effectiveness of the protections afforded by OSHA's vaccination and testing ETS relies on employees providing truthful and accurate information, including where applicable proof of vaccination status and COVID-19 test results to their employers and on their employers maintaining accurate records of vaccination status and testing results. If OSHA discovers that false statements or documents have been made or submitted, it will consider referrals to the U.S. Department of Justice for criminal prosecution in appropriate cases. So there you have it. This is certainly just the beginning, but I'm confident there will be much more to come in the days and weeks ahead. So please reach out to us at info at summitsafetygroup.com for additional resources and consultation on how we can help you and your organization sort through the implementation of this emergency temporary standard. For Summit Safety Group, I'm Jake Wolfenden, and I will see you in the next one.